A prophet is honored everywhere except in his, home, his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Let's pray. Dear God, I come here today and I ask you to open our hearts and our minds in this uncomfortable, uncomfortableness that we have with meeting new people and being in the community that you build in us and, and, and fill us with your love and your joy and your passion to get out there and meet people and reach people that don't know Jesus and to come together, sharpen each other's iron and really make a difference. I thank you for your love. I ask you to speak through me today and let it be reached to, for everyone here so we can extend it out in this community. Thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. It's kind of crazy as you, uh, you think and you're studying for stuff, you see that Jesus even encountered this uncomfortableness. His family and people around him in his hometown didn't believe in him. And they struggled to realize, and I, I love that verse, it said, and they scoffed. He did these great things. They're like, oh, how does he do this? And then they scoffed. Oh, he's just a carpenter's boy. Imagine how frustrating and the painfulness it must have been to not have your family and friends think or believe what you do. And it's crazy because um, myself grew up Catholic and did, went to church until I was able to drive myself and I didn't really go anymore. And then I accepted Christ in 2005 and I was that crazy kid and young adult and man, so I guess craziness followed me along, but then I accepted Christ in chains. And then God, who is amazing and can use anyone, has, has put me in a position of, as a pastor in 2006 and 2007, starting to do more and more. And man, sometimes my family and friends don't get it. They still wonder. And I can really see how he's talking and he shares how I, I, he can only do a few miracles or people only listen so much. You might have that going on around you, but just understand that uncomfortableness. We push through and we strive through and we make a difference because God is working through us. Look what it says in John 7, 2 and 5. It says, but soon it was time for the Jewish festival's shelters. And Jesus' brothers said to him, leave here and go to Judea where your followers can see your miracles. You can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world, for even his brothers didn't believe in him. See, they're egging him on and, and challenging him and trying to push him. And see, we have to understand that we get those pushings and people around us that might know our past and we all have a story. And I love my wife sharing her story a little today, but see, we grow when that uncomfortableness in our life challenges us, when we let it, when we don't get stuck and we don't get to get so fearful that we get comfortable. See, our temptation is to stay shallow and comfortable so nothing happens wrong. But life is gonna happen no matter what. And those challenges and those things that come help us grow and move. See, we're never gonna be comfortable and fall into the perfect healthy body of church or body of people that are becoming the church here See, if we're all comfortable, we stay right where we are. If we're never challenged, it's hard to grow. When you sharpen a, a sword or a knife, you get, remove some. It's a rough edge for hitting against each other to sharpen it. We need that challenge sometimes. See, when people are willing to get uncomfortable and to step through to understand there's gonna be different people here, but I'm gonna build relationships and I'm gonna be truthful, and I'm gonna open up, and I'm gonna grow, then we really understand what it means to understand and learn what the commands of Christ are. And that's to go into all the world, to make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them, and to remember that Jesus is with us. See, don't worry about uncomfortable times in your life. Get out there and push through those and make a difference. See, Paul was continually dealing with uncomfortable moments. It was part of his life, and he wrote about what it should look like in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 and 14. It says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. It is, so it is with the holy body of Christ. 
Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free, but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. The idea is the church is gonna have many different people in it that create the body and make up the body. Are we willing to understand and embrace the differences we have and use it together to strengthen what the church can do? See, I love that because we all have one spirit. Whatever our differences are, we have one spirit. When we apply that and we, we understand our differences are gonna happen, but there's one spirit, we can work and our heart can change and we can make a difference and impact the community. I love the fact that we have a surprise campus and we have a, re, a way to reach a, a part of the state an hour away with the same um, teachings of commands and the same love and the same desire. See, we can reach out more now because our home is around here and we wanna reach the people around here. And now we have groups of people doing the same thing that can reach people there. And that's how good and funny and hysterical God is. I just moved a, from surprise a half mile from the church we just bought. And I moved out here and, and that's good. It's fun because we have relations there that can help already. See, it's never comfortable to expand. But man, when we do it together and we believe that all these parts come together, we can make such a bigger and more important impact because it's so important that we believe that every single part is important. So the last couple of weeks, we started this uncomfortable series and we've gone through different topics or different points. Point one was the church is not about our preferences, it's about knowing God. Point two, the Christian life is supposed to be uncomfortable, so embrace it. Three, last week we learned at the center of Christian faith is the cross, an execution device. Four, Don shared here, following Jesus means dying, denying ourselves and taking up our own cross, denying ourselves and our comfort and taking up our own cross. And five, Jesus provides the ultimate example. It's Jesus that gives us that example we need to follow. No matter how comfortable we are or what it means to us and what we think is the best, we let it all go and Jesus is our head and we're coming together to learn to be one, one body working to make a difference. So today we're gonna dig a little farther. We're gonna go on and continue on with point six. Everyone is welcome and has a part to play in the body of Christ. Everyone is welcome and has a part to play. And that's the next step. We have a part to play. See, coming here and sitting and is, is awesome. We need to, don't forsake the, commute, the coming together, but we have, to, we have a part to play. We need to get in there. We need to be a part of it. Look what James says, and I love this. James was Jesus's brother who did not believe in him and who he was until later. And then if you ever read James, please do read the Bible. It's amazing the strength and the, the, the passion and the courage he writes about faith and doing. James 2, 1 and 4 says, Dear, my dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and others come in who are poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor, well, doesn't doesn't this discrimination show that your judgment are guided by evil motives? We are just opening up to understand that every single body part, no matter what its rough edges are, is important. Paul uses the body as a huge point to show how important each thing is. See, we have toes and we have feet and we have legs, lower legs and upper legs and hands and fingers. See, everything together helps us be whole and work for God the best. I'm aging and I have gout sometimes. And when my toe has gout and I can't move it, my foot is useless. 
My whole foot feels the pain of that gout and it's useless. See, we think we can do it without every part. But when God is calling us together as the body, get your strength, understand what you're good at and use it to help grow and help people grow. Cause that's our biggest goal is to have what we have and shine so much that people that don't know Jesus will accept him and know him. See verse 13, Paul shared, it says, some are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free, but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit and we all share the same spirit. No matter how different we are, we all share the same spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us when we accept Jesus as our Lord. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord, please see one of the staff Come talk to us, let us pray with you, let us share and open up and show you an incredible, the incredible good news about Jesus and let you grow with us and have that Holy Spirit. There's a book, Uncomfortable, we've been basing this um, series on and the author, his last name is McCracken, he said, the biblical image of the people of God is that we are stones being built together into a dwelling place. A dwelling place requires not one big stone, but many pieces of stones interlocked and fortified together. It's not that the stones lose their individual, individuality or their unique texture or shapes. The image is not one of identical bricks or prefab concrete blocks. It's just that only together do individual stones achieve the structural purpose of becoming the household of God. Together, our unique shapes complement each other and create a more structurally sound building. Jesus is the head here at Christ Church. We are all important body parts and stones. We talked about the first week, the living stones put together with our uniqueness and our craziness and our love for the Lord. We come together and we can do so much more and we're so much more sturdy and strong. See, the questions we should ask and remind ourselves all the time, isn't, does the church community that I live in or go to check off all my boxes and are all my um, priorities met and all my desires reached? That's not how we should look at it. We live here in Fountain Hills. We come to this church to grow and be different. We should be asking, is this the place I can faithfully serve the community and be committed to the body of Christ here? Because overall, our focus is one, Jesus. We have to understand that. In James 4.3, again, Jesus' brother says, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what gives you pleasure. Can we release and let our uncomfortableness help us grow? Or do we get stuck and we don't want to do because we want to be comfortable? Jordan mentioned starting point starting up next week and we have broken it up for three parts and there'll be 50 minute parts after the second service, the first weekend, second weekend, third weekend. You can start at any one. You do not have to start at step one even though it's step one. I know that might be hard for some of you that are very anal about stuff, <laughs> but don't look at the numbers, just the weeks. But step three is learning about serving and what areas we have to serve here. And you're gonna see descriptions and, and descriptions in part of what's important to help this function and reach people. And I hope that you love it here and you wanna be a part of what makes this tick and what makes us love reaching people in this community that don't know Jesus. No matter what, that is our why here at Christ Church to reach people that don't know Jesus. We, if you're here and you know Jesus, we're not the one we're trying to reach. We're trying to use all of us as one bar body to reach those people that don't know Jesus. So get the starting point, learn and be used. How unique you are, be used and use your gifts to make a difference. Number seven, being a part of the church is really hard. What Paul is trying to show is there's gonna be people here that are different. 
They have different backgrounds economically. They have different beliefs politically. No shocker, there's Democrats and Republicans here. I know. It's, I can't believe we can sit in the same room. But see, we're made up of all different things. And it doesn't matter because when we come here, it's about Jesus. And see, he's gifted us no matter what our financial background or our political background or what we believe or anything that help or does not help the kingdom growth does not matter here. And I hope that you understand that. It's hard sometimes because you could get in a group with somebody that is opposite belief of you in this world. Like you could be in a group with uh, uh, four Republicans and you're Democratic and you're like, oh, that group is so hard. But I've, what I've learned is when I've gotten in groups and I just let go and I meet people and I start growing, every person I've met that is seeking and following Jesus, I can learn from and I can grow from. And I leave all the other stuff out. That's a worldly thing. And I let it, I let it in, infest in me and I've seen the difference. Also with groups is, it's not getting around just the people that you like and that you have similarities with. It's going out there and meeting people. And I believe truly the best groups I've ever been in have been generally, I can't even say that word I'm gonna say. Every generation is covered. So I love it because we've had people in their 80s and 70s and 60s and 50s all the way down. And when I've done groups where it was all open and people could learn, man, I can learn from somebody in their 20s, especially tech, with technology. <laughs> and I can learn with somebody in their 80s that have gone through so many things and have so many experiences and so many stories how God has done great things. Don't get bunched up in my group has to be everyone so similar. Open up, find a group, sharpen iron, and really make that uncomfortableness push you to be better. The reality is living in a community with people, especially different people, it's gonna be really, really hard. It's gonna be really, really hard. Take that sacrifice and say, I don't care. It's about you, Jesus, and I'm gonna do things because he's there with us, with us and he will do them through us. There's disagreements, uncomfortable moments, things that will always be in your mind and in your hearts. Can you look past them? Can you be different? Can you work and serve along people that are different? Again, I have learned my most when I've been with people that don't think the same way I do. Because when people think the same way I do, we don't move that much because we keep talking about the things we like. And it's harder to move. But think about that. Understand that that's going to be happening. There's going to be boundaries and potential issues and things that you'll speak about. But when you open up and help each other, you will grow. The author says, the tension of a diverse conglomeration of people coming together in Christ's name will often be combustible. But it's, it's also at the heart of the gospel. See, we've shared in red letters that they threw out the net for all fish, not just certain fish. See, we've, we've talked about the body of Christ being so important today that it's all parts of that body that make it better. The differences, the uncomfortableness we could have is combustible sometimes. It makes us want to blow and just go, ah. Oh. But when we stop and go, man, this is for Jesus. What a difference. What an excitement. Charles Spurgeon, in a message written in 1891, it's called The Best Donation, said, the church is faulty, but that is no excuse for your not joining it. If you are the Lord's, nor need your own faults keep you back. For the church is not an institution for perfect people, but a sanctuary for sinners saved by grace, who though they are saved are still sinners and need all the help they can derive from the sympathy and guidance of their fellow believers. The church is the nursery of God's weak children where they are nourished and grow strong. It is the fold for Christ's sheep 
the home for Christ's family. That's amazing to me. See, we come together and we help each other because when it comes to it, I've seen it. I've worked with so many people with, even with people here that are different, but they come together for that same purpose and great things happen. We are here to help each other know Jesus and to grow. When we have frustrations and tensions, it's so easy just to pack up and go. I'm challenging you to step up, embrace the differences, the uncomfortableness, and continue to grow to be different. And just like I said, embrace it, because we can be better. It doesn't exist to have a tension-free church. It doesn't exist to have a tension-free community. Continue to grow and understand when we do that, we learn to love God more and love people. And that's a huge commandment right there. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. We grow that way. We forget about the uncomfortableness and we work together. All those stones, different shapes coming together to make a difference. Number eight, although we are different, we are united in the most important way by the Spirit of God. We are united by the Spirit of God. The church just isn't made up of a bunch of motley people coming together saying, I love going to church and hanging out with everyone and I love going to small group or life group during the week. No, see, we are drawn together by the Holy Spirit, the same purpose in our heart. When we study and we learn and we know God and he knows us, we can do that. The uniting factor for all this is us to let go of everything but Jesus and follow together and learn that the Holy Spirit is in all of us, the same Spirit. The church has come together and put together and we all have that same life challenging thing the repentance of sin and the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. That is so cool. We all have that. Again, if you don't, please come see us. Don't leave here without wanting to know more about that. That has bound us together to be the best we can be. Use it, embrace it, and continue to move. This does not mean that all churches must look alike, worship alike, Paul points it out, there's gonna be differences, but that spirit connects us. In the movie Braveheart, William Wallace inspires a group of farm tenors, uh, tenants. They're going to battle and they're getting, they're getting wiped out by England and they're just a bunch of regular people coming together and he gives this huge speech to get them fired up and they come united and he says at the end, he says, Alba Gulbra, and it means Scotland forever until judgment. This unites them and they don't care anymore what their differences are. They're gonna fight and they're gonna stand for what they have. See, us as Christians have a better thing uniting us, a stronger thing uniting us. As bands of brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit and we have the Lord Jesus Christ that connected us for eternity with our Father. There's nothing stronger than that. Take a look at this quick video. William Wallace. Gotta be a little tall enough. Presenting yourselves on this battlefield. I give you thanks. This is our army. To join it, you give homage. I give homage to Scotland. And if this is your army, why does it go? We didn't come here to fight for them. Oh, the 
pressure, too many. Son from Scotland. I am William Wallace. William Wallace is seven feet tall. Yes, I've heard. Kills men by the hundreds. And if he were here, he'd consume the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his arse. <laughs> That's amazing. See, I love what he said in there. We're not fighting for this. We're fighting for scholars. See, we're not fighting for Christ's church alone. We're fighting for Jesus. We are here together. The differences we have to come together to be as strong as we can to go out there and reach people that don't know him. Let's band together. Let's understand it won't be easy. Let's let down our walls and get in groups and truly follow and understand that we are here and we are doing a, a great service and we plan things strategically to be the best we can. We're not trying to do things to make it angry, you angry or do things to, to change what you used to do. We're trying to get you in a place where you're so uncomfortable that you can grow and you can learn because God has done all this for our lives by sending his son can we embrace this uncomfortableness? Jesus was uncomfortable going to the cross, but he went to the cross because he loved his father. He wanted to do his will. As Christ's church, we are a group of people who used to be disconnected, but now together we're Christ's church and we are people of unity, understanding our vision of one real passion and joining it together to do this in this community in surprise and wherever else God opens up for us. Can we relate to Jesus who had struggles with unity in his home, hometown and with his family but stayed the course because of God? And look at his brother that didn't believe, James, wrote a book that was so inspiring. We must be people of full unity for Jesus. We are foreigners on this earth. I pray that the rest of our lives, we allow the uncomfortableness of being followers of Jesus to bind us together as one. First Peter 2, 9 and 12 says, for you are a chosen people, you are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light, once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly amongst your unbelieving neighbors 
then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your humble behavior or honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. As we get ready to go, I just want you to think of this quote and let it fill your heart today. Take a picture of it, it'll be up on the screen. It is, uncomfortable to followers of Jesus is our comfort. Uncomfortable to followers of Jesus is our comfort. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for your love. I thank you that you stepped in out of your comfort and did exactly what God the Father wanted you to do. And you showed us the way to, to reach out and be one together under your head and your guidance to be the body that makes this world change. Thank you. Ask that you be with us. Bless everyone on this Memorial Day and just help us remember the sacrifices people made and the difference we can make in this community. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much.